The ability to create a convincing argument plays an important role in your life, both personally and professionally. Sometimes your attempt to persuade will be mundane. Hey, let's eat at that New Mexican place instead of the usual. Sometimes the argument may be with yourself, and the outcome, life-changing. Should I leave America for that great new job in Bulgaria? Often the argument will be work-related. Dear company president, we must invest in new security software. Regardless of time, place, or purpose, you want your arguments to be sound and persuasive. The question is, how do you accomplish that? To be effective, your argument should have a thesis that states your position on the topic. This position is sometimes called your claim, and it has two parts. The topic, plus your opinion on the topic. Put those two parts together into a single sentence, and you should have a strong thesis for your argument. Let's look at an example. Our topic? Drunk drivers. Our position on drunk drivers? Revoke their licenses immediately. Combining those two parts results in a thesis sentence. Anyone found guilty of drunk driving should have their licenses revoked immediately. Another example. Topic? American Mass Transit, our position on the topic. It's coming, like it or not. Combine those two parts together and we have a thesis. Americans will soon be using mass transit, like it or not. Because your thesis is the backbone of your argument, it must be strong and effective. Here are three common pitfalls to avoid. First, the announcement. For example, an announcement thesis might say something like, My paper will discuss drunk drivers and revoking their licenses. Or, In this paper, I will examine the drunk driver issue. You see, the announcement is too general to serve as the strong thesis you need. Next is the simple statement of fact. For example, Drunk drivers present a danger to highway safety. That's a clear statement of a fact, but few people would disagree with it. In other words, the factual statement doesn't offer a clear position or an opinion on what should be done. Last is the absolute statement. An absolute implies something is always true, without exception. An example would be, all drunk drivers deserve the harshest punishment provided by law. To refute this absolute statement about all drunk drivers, an opponent need only point out a single exception. Another important consideration is your audience, those whom you're trying to persuade. For an argument essay, audiences can be divided into three categories. First, the agreeing audience. Most already accept your basic position. Thus, your focus might be to convince this group to take action towards your goal. This audience wouldn't need the sobering statistics and the gruesome photos of carnage caused by drunk drivers. Your tone would be upbeat and positive as you encourage them to take action. Most people in the neutral or middle-of-the-road audience haven't made up their minds yet on the issue. So, your purpose would be to bring them to your side of the debate. In our example, the focus of your content would be to convince them of the gravity of the problem of drunk drivers and the need to be concerned. Your serious tone would match your approach to the topic. Finally, the toughest audience, disagreeers. These people hold the opposite point of view to yours. Thus, your goal is usually modest, to find common ground and persuade them to be open-minded enough to at least give your views a fair hearing. Your tone must be respectful if you hope to make any progress. An important strategy for the last two groups, neutral and disagreeing, is to bring in one of the opposing side's arguments, then to cast doubt on it to show its flaws. For example, those opposed to immediately revoking any drunk driver's license often argue that doing so imposes a, quote, undue economic hardship, to which you could reply after you bring it up, when it comes to choosing between inconveniencing a drunk driver's mode of transportation to work, 
or the death of innocent people on the highway. I'm confident responsible people like you will make the right choice. Finally, the heart of any argument is your supporting points and their evidence, which must be valid and relevant. Consider, for example, this thesis. School uniforms should be mandatory. Your supporting reasons are that school uniforms reduce costs for families, improve classroom discipline, make schools safer, and save students time when getting dressed. Do you see a problem with that last one? While saving time is certainly a valid point, it's not truly relevant in an argument about the education of children. When it comes to evidence, it's helpful to think of four basic types. Examples, facts, statistics, and experts. Let's look at each type. When it comes to reducing clothing costs for struggling families, you could offer this published fact. According to USA Today, parents spent an average of $185 per child purchasing non-uniform clothing in 1998, compared to an average of $104 spent per child to purchase school uniforms. When it comes to improving discipline in the classroom, you could offer this well-known example. Miami-Dade County implemented a mandatory uniform policy for elementary and middle schools in 1996 and saw an immediate decrease in discipline problems. Statistics have to do with data, and they're often reported as percentages. For example, when it comes to making schools safer, you could cite this statistic. After the first year of its mandatory school uniform policy, Long Beach, California United Public School District reported a 91% decrease in school crimes. And finally, the expert. This is someone considered an authority on your topic. Here's a strong quote that could be used in the conclusion of your essay. Virginia Dre, assistant professor at Youngstown State University, reviewed attendance, graduation, and proficiency pass rates at 64 public high schools in Ohio. Her final analysis surprised her. I went into the study thinking uniforms don't make a difference. I came away seeing an amazing difference. Those four forms of evidence, plus an intelligent consideration of your audience, can help make your argument a strong and persuasive one, no matter the situation.